Welcome back, guys. We're going to talk scoring. In your Yahoo Fantasy Football League, how in the world should you set your scoring? And the answer to that question can only be done by how do you want your league to look. There's a reason why it's called standard scoring settings. And the Yahoo standard scoring that's set up is to make a league very competitive, keep scores close, and not have anything look too crazy. And the biggest questions that you have to ask to start with, fractional points, negative points. Do you want to have those? My answer is always, absolutely, I want fractional points. Because if you do not have fractional points, let's say... Your, your star wide receiver gets 109 yards. Well, he's only getting 10 points. He's not getting that 10.9 points. He's getting 10 points. So I always have fractional scoring. Uh, negative points, absolutely. You want to make sure that you have negative points. Um, because if some, if some defense really, really, really craps a bed and gives up 55 points and doesn't have a sack, doesn't have an interception, they're going to have negative points. And any coach who starts that defense should be punished. So, there are a lot of settings. First, we're going to go over the standard scoring settings, which Yahoo always puts in place. Passing touchdowns, four points. Every time, passing touchdowns, four points. I have been in a league where passing touchdowns were six. That makes quarterbacks so, so, so overpowered compared to every single other person. Same way if you put passing yards down to 10 yards per point, that makes quarterbacks so, so, so overpowered compared to everybody else. And everybody's going to want that quarterback. So some of the other settings that you can have with your quarterbacks, you can have pass attempts. So you get a point per pass attempt. I do not recommend that. Um, it does... It does Say, hey, quarterback, if you're going to throw 50 passes a game, we're going to give you points, even if you don't complete them. Um, completions, that's more along the lines of something that you can use. Um, at least it shows that good quarterbacks who complete passes get rewarded for those passes. But unlike points per reception, I would not go with .5. Would not recommend .5 points. I'd go somewhere in the neighborhood of .1. Maybe 0.2 if you're feeling real squirrely, but 0.1 or 0.15, somewhere in there, 0.1, point per completion, that will keep it decently competitive uh, compared to, and would keep it kind of on track with how um, the, the league would get scored. So if you're going to do point per completion, 0.5 is too much, 0.1 might be too low. But I would say that's kind of right around in the ballpark. Um, but if you are going to do 0.5 points per completion, I would also put in incomplete passes and make it 0.25. Therefore, the quarterbacks are getting a little bit punished every single time that they incomplete a pass. You're still getting your completions. So, I mean, if you are you know, 25 or 50, you're still going to get some points. Um, and then, let's punish those O-lines. Let's just do it. We're going to go with negative, because you can put negative in, negative 0.5 points per sack. So every time your quarterback gets smoked, gets sacked, negative 0.5 points. I generally, I tend to avoid using sacks. Um, mostly because it, it punishes the O-line. I, I was an O-lineman. That's, don't punish that O-line, man. Sometimes a quarterback takes a sack. Uh, pick six is thrown. You can do something along the lines of negative two points per pick six, negative four. Um, you're not going to get a ton of these thrown every year, but it can punish a quarterback a little bit and make them a little less overpowered compared to everybody else, especially if you're going to start doing completions and incompletions. 40-yard um, completions, these are really fun. So you can do anywhere from one... One to four points, in my opinion, for a 40-yard completion. You're not going to get a ton of them, but it's some bonus points. 40-yard 
touchdown passes. That would also, remember, 40-yard touchdown passes is in addition to the four points you're already getting. In likely in addition to, you know, the two points you're getting for a 40-yard completion. So you want to make sure, if you want to balance the league, that your 40-yard touchdown passing, or 40-yard touchdown passes are in line with the other stats that you have with your quarterback. So a 40-yard touchdown pass, maybe make it another two points. So now you get your passing touchdown, four points. You get a 40-yard completion, another two, so you're up to six. 40-yard touchdown pass, that's eight. On top of the 40 yards that you're getting, so that's one point, I don't know, what is it, 25, 15 out of 25, 1.6 so you're getting the 1.6 passing yards you're getting the touchdown you're gonna have it's almost 10 points for one pass 10 points so you have to take that into consideration rushing so this is ronda rushing now rushing touchdown six points every time it keeps things very safe um it keeps things in line with your wide receivers um, and when you're looking at rushing and receiving you have to remember that there are receiving backs there are wide receivers that rush so these both of these two categories really need to be in line with each other very very closely because you don't want your wide receivers to be super overpowered compared to your running backs or vice versa especially if you're running a flex position because a lot of times, if you watch some of these really good coaches, their flex is going to be a running back every time. So if you want to kind of even that out, that's where this right here, PPR, comes into play. Uh, because now one of those slot receivers who's getting 10 receptions is good in your flex. Because with 10 receptions, he's getting 5 points just on receptions alone. So I do like to also add in rushing attempts because people like Derrick Henry who are getting, you know, especially back in the day, 20 to 25 rushing attempts per game, um, but at the time had a really crappy O-line, but he's, so he's only getting, you know, 60, 70 yards, making him be rewarded for the amount of work that he's doing, it's great. In my opinion, it's great. But... If you're doing 0.5 PPR, I would do something along the lines of 0.2 for rushing attempts. Maybe even 0.1. So they're getting a little bit of a reward, but not a ton. So for now, we'll, we'll do 0.2. And if you're looking at 40-yard runs, 40-yard rushing touchdowns, you also have to remember that is in addition to the rushing yards, in addition to the rushing touchdown. Um, same with same thing that happened with quarterback. So 40 yard run, you're looking at you know maybe two and two again, unless you really want to unless you really want to reward those 40 yard runs, you know you could throw out a 10, and you could throw out, throw out a five a five spot for a 40 yard touchdown. Actually, let's go four four yards for a 40 yard run. So now every 40 yard run is automatically eight points. 40 yard rushing touchdown, let's throw a 10 out. So now you're getting 18 points for one 40-yard rushing touchdown. But now if you want balance, if you want balance in your league, you have to come back up here, check out your passing, go down here, look at your receiving, and you have to try and balance all of that out. Otherwise now, your running backs, one 40-yard rush, beast mode time, beast mode, 20 points, one run. That's a little OP compared to your quarterback who's throwing you know 100 or who's throwing for 300 yards and is still not getting getting that many points. So, it's all about balance and making sure that all of your categories are in balance with each other so one is not overpowered compared to the other. And that's one of the reasons why standard scoring is standard. It's very 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 close in my opinion to about as balanced as it can get. Uh, wide receivers, same thing. I always do PPR. 
I have not done full point PPR in a very, very, very long time. Um, that really, really helps, you know, number ones on any team because they're getting 10 catches a game. Um, so just like with running and passing, you have 40 yard touch or 40 yard receptions, 40 yard touchdowns. Um, what I haven't gotten into was first downs, passing first downs, rushing first downs, receiving first downs. I've not played with those at all. Um, they, in my opinion, they would tend to really, really favor your, um, favor your quarterback, maybe favor running back. But with a lot of teams right now having a third down back separate from their first two down backs, um, it's I think it's really going to, if you start going into the passing, rushing, receiving first downs, it's really going to favor quarterbacks compared to anything else because you're not putting a lot of third down backs on your team because they're not getting the work that is needed to get those points. Um Adding in rushing first downs and saying, you know, four points, maybe that would pull people towards those third down backs. But that's something that is going to be an individual league consideration. I personally don't use them, but that might get a little bit of those third down back um, usages into your league. Uh, Kicking and punt returning, punt return touchdowns, six points. I personally really, really like using return yards. Um, It changes people, at least in the past, like Tyler Lockett and Tarek Cohen into these um, guys who, you know, they'll get a few catches a game, but add in some return yards. um, 10 yards equals one point. And now suddenly, they're producers on your team. I personally really, really like kick and punt returning as a way to kind of change up people's mindset and uh, also as a side note this makes Tyreek Hill a monster in your league so temper caution return yards does favor anybody who actually does returns and Tyreek Hill man when he's pulling in 150 return yards a game and 100 plus or 100 plus receiving yards a game plus some rushing yards a game that's a lot of points for one guy. Uh, Tyreek Hill becomes, like I said, just a monster when you turn turn this on. I like it. Like I said, it adds another layer to your to your game, um, and that's my personal preference is to turn return yards on. Uh, so two point conversions, two points, fumbles. Um, so if you have a fumble machine, you can do like negative two points on. Uh, or you can do like negative one point on fumble, but remember with fumbles lost, you're also already losing two points. So now you're losing one point for fumble, one two points for fumbles lost. If you're gonna do one point for fumbles, you might also want to just make this also a negative one. So you're you get the negative two points for fumbles lost and one point for fumbles. It keeps things pretty even as far as um, fumbling goes, and I actually really like it this way, where if somebody fumbles a ball give a minus one. If that fumble gets lost, give them another minus one on top of it. So then you get the negative two for fumbles lost. It makes sense. It punishes people for not holding on to the ball. Um, Offensive fumble return touchdown, six points. Uh, For the longest time, Yahoo didn't have this. And if, let's say, a running back fumbled the ball, your wide receiver picked it up and ran it in for a touchdown, there's just nothing. There's nothing that would happen. So adding this category in, was awesome. I applaud you, Yahoo, for for bringing this in. Um, field goals, three, 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 four, five. This is pretty standard. It makes sense. Um, Forty yards, four points. Fifty yards, five points. And anything under under forty yards is three points. It makes sense. I've seen people go low as two for zero to nineteen. They, they don't happen a lot. Three makes sense. In my opinion, it's better instead of reducing. The amount of points a kicker can get by um, short field goals. Add in field goals missed. Um, and add in field goals missed, especially short ones. Make it make them make it a big punish. Big, make it a big punishment. Minus five if you miss it within twenty. Minus four, and then minus three. 
So, I mean, the kickers are going to get punished. You want to have an accurate kicker. Um, when this comes in, I've seen people just not use kickers because if they think their kicker is going to have a crap day or they look at the weather and see, oh, man, it's super windy out out on the East Coast. Uh, Giant Stadium's got 40-mile-an-hour gust left to right. You know, we're just not going to play kicker today. Um, alternatively, just keep it off if you want your kickers to be a little bit more OP. Not, not really. They'll never be OP. What am I saying? Kickers will never be OP. But if you want your kickers to remain at least somewhat viable, don't turn on missed field goals. Um, field goal total yards. This is new. Um, so I haven't experimented with this. I didn't even know this was here. I haven't changed my, my scoring in a little while. Um, so, you know, 10 yards per point in field goals, total yards. That's pretty awesome. And then you add in another dimension. You make your kickers a little bit more viable in total points. Um, I love this as like a negative five. Negative five points for a missed extra point attempt. It was a big deal when they first moved the extra points back. Um, now, defense special teams. This is where I love to add in add in a little bit of flavor because defenses are essentially a lost art and a lost, I don't know, basically a lost cause in fantasy football because your defenses aren't going to score a ton more or less points than another defense. Caveat being two years ago, New England Patriots, who basically everybody rode to the championship because that was the most insane defense ever. Um, but... These standard points make sense. Um, 10 for 0, 10 for a shutout. Um, I've upped this before to like 15 for a shutout or 14 for a shutout um, because shutouts just barely happen. And if it does happen, good on them. Like, congratulations, you shut somebody out. That's amazing. Um, but uh, if you already have return yards clicked up top, I would not click return yards here. You can. You can double dip there, but double dipping is kind of rough in my opinion. But if you add it in like, you know, 10 yards per return point, then that'll give your defense and special teams a little bit more, a little bit more um, oomph. But out of all these extra categories, tackles for loss, 0.5 on tackles for loss, and three and outs. I put two points for th per three and out because to me, a three and out is as good as an interception. It's as good as a fumble recovery. And I actually, I like to up this to 10. I like to up my kickoff and punt return touchdowns to 10 points on defense. Give your defense a little bit, a little bit of points, man. I mean, the more categories you click on defense and the more points you can get through your defense this way, um, the more you're going to spread out those defenses in your league. So it actually makes picking a defense make sense. Otherwise, people are going to pick defenses near the end. It's just it's what's going to happen. So now, finally, we are at the fun portion of scoring bonus offense passing yards bonus so for me personally i like to reward 300 yard games i mean i know it's a commonplace now and that 300 yard games happen with regularity in the nfl give those 300 yard passers five points 350, another 5 points. 400, another 5 points. Same thing with rushing. 5 points. 125. Actually, no. Take that back. Scratch that. 150. 5 points. 200-yard rusher. 10 more points. So for this, what you can do is you can do 400, 500, and at 500 points, or 500 yards, they get an extra 10 points. Same with receiving. 100... 150, 200, and we're looking at 
five, five, ten. And I mean, this is going to help. If you have a guy with a big day, I mean, he's going to score for you, baby. He's going to score. Um, I like turning bonus points on. And I like, this is a standard bonus points for my leagues that, that I run. Uh, 3, 4, 5, 5, 5, 10. 100, 150, 200, 5, 5, 10. 100, 150, 200, 5, 5, 10. So back in the day when Josh Gordon was just a beast, he was a real beast in my leagues. I mean, it was only for like four games, but he was a beast. Um, a lot of people don't like bonus offense because people who are having a big day are already getting a lot of points as it is. But reward reward big days. Just like I say, reward people in defense with three and outs, tackle for loss, that kind of stuff. Make, make your defense viable in your league. Uh, I do punish kickers a little bit more than a lot of other people do, but... Minus five point point after. But, I mean, what you have to do is at the end of the day, you have to look at your league and say, how do I, how competitive do I want my league? There's a reason, as I said at the beginning of this video, there's a reason why standard scoring is standard. And it's because standard scoring keeps things competitive. Yahoo has been doing this a lot longer than any of us have. And they've seen what should be standard. They are changing what was standard. Five, six years ago, PPR was not standard. I think it was about six, maybe seven. PPR was not standard. Points per reception, not standard. Initially, it came out, and I believe it was one. And they found out that that was not good. So they dialed it back to 0.5. So, what is standard is always going to be evolving. But standard is very, very good for just making sure your league has a competitive balance. And anytime you go and you mess with your scoring settings, you are sort of messing with that competitive balance. And if you mess with that competitive balance, you have to be able to make sure that you are able to balance it out again otherwise there's going to be a huge run on quarterbacks there's going to be a huge run on wide receivers there's going to be a huge run on running backs defenses are going to be taken early nobody's going to play a kicker because your kickers are getting punished so you have to maintain some sort of balance throughout all of your scoring settings otherwise your league is not going to be competitive or it's going to be weird in general um, as for, you know, who's overpowered and who's not. And it can really turn off a lot of managers, and maybe they won't want to come back to your league. Um, so if you want to go have some fun, get in here on the scoring settings. Get some bonus offense points in. Uh, if you have any, any questions about competitive balance, feel free to shoot me a message, leave me a comment. Remember to like and subscribe. Uh, if you like more of these videos, let me know. I can continue making them. But as far as scoring settings go, standard is competitive. But if you want to have some fun, come on in here to scoring settings. Mess, up, mess around with their scoring settings a bit. And have a good time.